Hundreds of federal employees do little to no work on behalf of taxpayers every year, but it's taxpayers who pay their salaries. In most cases, the taxpayers get absolutely nothing. In 2011, so-called official time, we'll get to exactly what that means in a moment, cost taxpayers nearly $160 million. To put that in perspective, in the private sector, a manufacturer could employ 3,200 people and pay them $50,000 apiece for the year. No James the Shirk is with the Heritage on. Foundation. The taxpayers have virtually no accountability to ensure that their resources are being spent well. Federal employees on official time work out of labor unions, such as the AFGE, or National Air Traffic Controllers Association, rather than do what they were hired to do. They are very valuable people to the federal government. We've got uh, nurses, we've got pharmacists uh, at the VA, uh, whose, whose job is to provide medical care and treatment for ailing patients. Uh, we've got scientists at EPA uh, who are there to do a very important, very technical job. On official time, federal workers can lobby Congress or even their own agencies. They can do just about anything with very few restrictions. Mark Flatten, an investigative reporter with the Washington Examiner, tells us oversight is largely absent. Is that there is so little scrutiny of official time. When you have major agencies that can't even tell you who's taking it, which unions are benefiting. Official time was passed into law in 1978. In recent years, the numbers, people and hours, has substantially grown. In 2011, it accounted for nearly three and a half million hours. Congress is so far unwilling to make any changes. They don't really want to get into a big fight with very politically active and politically powerful uh, federal labor unions. We contacted several unions. Each declined to talk to us. I'm Christine Frizzell, Fox 45 News.